seed sparta teas. So um, can you break down what are the benefits of doing seed sparta teas and how do you create them and how often should they be done? So this is a good topic and I'd like to bridge it into two parts and I'll mention up front. The first is about SST and its origin and why we use it and I can keep it pretty succinct. But the second part is we've moved away from seed sprouted teas. They still are very valuable, but the goal was to get the peak enzymatic content. As you learn about biology, the breakdown of organic matter is heavily enzyme dependent. And that's why you hear people that eat raw. They're like, you need the enzymes in the food. When you cook it, you destroy it. And the enzymes are really important to gut health. In soil health, it's similar. And so um, Clackamas Coot, Jim, um, which by the way, we're going to do, he just sent me like hundreds of his Pacalola one, his famous genetic that he did a back cross on. And I'm I'm super excited about it, Uh, but not the Pacalola, the one, sorry. Uh, We grew that one last time. That just happened. That's why I'm thinking about it. But as far as Jim goes, Clackamas Coot, um, he was a bread baker. He owned a tree nursery. He was part of many different um, forums where we provided information to organic growers. And he was just looked up as this legend and people really trusted his advice because he backed it with facts. And he started postulating that, hey, these seeds, they have the energy of life in there. They use enzymes to sprout, not nutrients. And... So he got some seed and he sprouted it and there's more to the story, but long story short, he ground it, uh, blend them up in water and he watered that to the plants. And the next day in the morning, he opened um, the grow and he was thinking, wow, why are all these plants? Why do they have such turgor? Why are they so happy right now? What's different? And so over many duplications, you would get that same experience every time. And one of the things that is interesting is when you are, are gardening, it's like a pet and you know when your, your pet wags its tail and is happy and the treat you gave it was something of benefit and ubiquitously across the board, anybody that uses a sprouted seed tea, they see these benefits and I'll tell you how to do it. It's pretty simple, but the fundamental philosophy behind it is that when you sprout a seed, it's this enzymatic process that allows the creation of life and it's dormant in there. We'd like to unlock those enzymes. And then before the plant uses them, we steal it, we give it to our plant. And um, it also crosses over where people that eat uh, vegetarian or not even that, just a healthy lifestyle, a lot of times we're looking at seeds as a higher source of nutrition. And oftentimes they'll have sprouted seeds as the more available nutrition form because that pre-sprouting unlocks some of the difficult to access nutrients and allows the gut to digest it. Probably also because of some of the enzymes. And enzymes are weird. The most research on enzymes is for beer brewing because that's where enzymes are very important for converting starch and sugars and making alcohol. And it's a certain process to make the same duplicatable uh, result. So you can get find lots of research on amylase enzyme. But there's not as much information out there on phosphatase and protease and all these other ones that exist in every one of those seeds. And that's because the beer brewers didn't require that. But in soil... Every single seed, regardless of what you get, will have a variety of enzymes that are of benefit. Um, So you can use really any organic seed to sprout and to to tap into this benefit. Um, The first time that Coot shared it with us on the forum, he said, go find good organic seed, any organic seed. And the cheapest that you could access tonight, if you don't want to go online and buy any seeds, would be to go to the grocery store and buy organic popcorn seed because they have organic popcorn seed in bulk available. And then you can just sprout them in a sprouting cup, in a glass jar. You can Google how to sprout seeds. And that led to us selling the Easy Sprout. It's my favorite sprouting device. And we would use those and fill them full. And then you blend that in water. And we've got a blog article about SST. You can Google build a soil SST recipe. It breaks down like the measurement of how many seeds and how much water, but we found none of that really matters. You just need to sprout a generous amount of seeds and say, you know, a quarter cup of seeds can sprout into a whole bunch of seed. And if you take that by volume and water in a blender, you just want to get maybe a quarter full of a blender, the rest water, blend it, dump that into your bucket of water and feed it to your plants. And that's the simple explanation. You can certainly get weird about the recipe. And that's why I gave you the blog. Um, and after that, people went crazy with it and they try a variety of seeds. I've used our cover crop. That's got 12 different seeds in it. So that's some variety for making an SST. Um, we like the corn a lot. 
out of all the seeds that we've tried, when we get heirloom corn, the water smells sweet. It's really white. It seems like it imparts a lot more enzymes than a typical sprouting. I don't have science to back that up. I just know that um, the first enzyme that they found, I think it was something in the ocean, but the first time they were able to duplicate it naturally instead of like from an animal was in corn and it's called zeatin. And so that's part of the history there. Um, but fast forward, we started learning well, that these beer brewers, they're not sprouting their seed every time. Now there are still malting houses that do that. They'll sprout the seed across the floor. They have an entire process and then they brew the beer. But typically what happens is that's a professional job. And then those seeds, as soon as they're sprouted, they dry them out. That actually preserves the enzymes and they're active and available. And I used to think that's not possible because these are alive, but we're basically releasing the enzyme and then putting it in stasis. Um, and that is just a malted seed. So then we went on a mission. Well, what can we buy malted seed? And of course they want to sell it to you, but they heat it. And they do that because if you roast the malted seed to a darker color, you get more flavor. And so beer brewers have many varieties of roasting levels that they're looking for. So we went with the lightest one, the least amount of heat, and that worked really well. Um, fast forward, Coot and I made the gnarly barley, and that is sprouted barley, sprouted lentils, and sprouted um, organic non-GMO corn. And so when you're taking these ancient grains like corn and the, the lentils, and you're adding the barley, which is heavily available, a lot of enzyme research, they've already been sprouted and dried. So now what I do is I take that, grind it up fresh in a blender, and just sprinkle it on the soil. And it takes out the step where I have to plan a day ahead to sprout the seed. If you'd like to sprout the seed, it's fine. And many of us still do that. But what we learned was sprouting seed at home, if you're trying to do this, you want the tail, the little white part of the seed that comes out in originally to be as short as possible, about to just explode out of the seed or barely have left. If you get a long tail like that, much of the enzymes have already started to be utilized by that growth. And so if you are gonna sprout some seeds, you want to arrest them as soon as you see that sprouting and uh, blend them up and use them. You could even dry them out for yourself. Some people will put them on low in the oven, you know, like just to dehydrate them and they'll make their own malted seed. From what we can tell, there's pretty good science at these sprouting labs. And so they are able to unlock a little bit better, more consistent percentage of enzymes than sprouting your own seeds. But certainly they both, I mean, they both produce the same reaction. It's unbelievable. So... That's the whole story. I wonder maybe if you have any questions or anything I left out that might be helpful. No, that's pretty interesting. I didn't know about that that second part there. I know people are still sprouting their own seeds, but having that option, the other way to get the enzymes is pretty interesting. It was pretty interesting that you uh, even use this 12 seed blend, the cover crop blend. Cover crop makes a lot of sense for use because it's diverse. And so when we first learned about sprouted seed teas, we learned that basically every seed would work and nature does like diversity. Um, the other thought is, well, cover crop is usually on farm soil, and sometimes those seeds germinate and die, and it's, it's, it's a natural process. It's a living seed meal at that point. Even if your cover crop doesn't grow, and you let it sprout, and then, and then you just till it in immediately, it's, it's a seed meal that normally you pay money for, like soybean meal. But these are better seeds. You've made them alive in the soil and then killed them, and they're fertilizer. So many benefits, um, even if the enzymes aren't perfect your sprouted seed tea is going to have some nutrition. So, This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrow at 15 to save on any of their products.